Your Royal Highness, Your Excellencies, Honorable Speakers of this evening, and special guests from the postcode lotteries in Holland, England, and Scotland, ladies and gentlemen. We've gathered here tonight in this world-famous setting of the Stockholm City Hall, where the most prominent intellects of our time meet once a year at the Nobel Prize Banquet. And sitting next to you tonight might be a scientist, a politician, a businessman, an activist, or a journalist. Because we at the Postcode Lottery, we believe that all good forces must unite in order to reach a vision of a low-carbon world. We also believe that each and every one of you sitting here tonight has the capacity to contribute. Now, fighting climate change requires something from all of us, and we need to be courageous. We probably need to move outside of our own comfort zone, and we need to think a bit out of the box, I think. And for many of you, you might have started this process already just because watching a postcode lottery running a climate event might be a, a bit out of the box. Now, you're not alone. Since we announced this, the most common question has been why. Why does a lottery organize a climate event? Now, after three years in the Swedish market, 97% of the Swedish public already knows who we are. And that's a good figure, but much fewer knows why. Why do we exist? The postcode lottery is a fundraising mechanism. Our vision is to improve conditions for mankind and for the environment. That is why. And as a social entrepreneur, we use commercial tools and the market forces to raise money through the lottery. We call this model market-driven charity. So all the profit from the lottery is donated to charities. But equally important is that we give publicity and awareness to the urgent work that these charities do. And this we do via television, marketing campaigns, and events, events like this one. So the Postcode Lottery is not an expert organization to solve challenges the world is facing. No, we provide a platform for the experts to act. And this evening, we have the great honor to present some of our friends and the world's most distinguished and dedicated actors on fighting climate change. They will illustrate the way towards a low-carbon future, facing challenges such as a global financial crisis, a new global climate deal, and a future where we have achieved a balance between welfare and growth and the needs of the environment. I am proud now to give the floor to a man who on July 1st will be responsible for leading the European Union the presidency through a severe financial crisis, still with a high ambition, I know, to settle a new global climate deal in Copenhagen, the summit in December 2009. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Swedish Prime Minister, Fredrik Reinfeldt. Thank you. Welcome. Unfortunately, the world has a fever, and the temperature is rising. The negative effects of climate change could be seen throughout the world already today. The problem is man-made, and it's also linked to our dependence on fossil fuel. It's actually the case that our dependence on fossil fuel is increasing as we speak. That's the bad news. The good news is that we can do something about it. That we have uh, political leadership, people that are engaging in this fight against climate change that is willing to do more. That we have the financial solutions, that we have the knowledge, both that the problem exists and how to deal with it. We just need to push together the political leadership to give us the solutions.